Now, we are closing out the book of Galatians. Um, I first want, first want to give honor to the Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me to hear the gospel one day, repentant of my sin, got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Spirit, and thank God, living for the Lord each day. We also want to thank God, you know, for each and every one of you here, all you tuning in. We pray that you're going to hear a word of God as you've been hearing for the last oh, months and months. Um, I thank God for my pastor, Pastor Williams, and the First Lady, Sister Williams. Amen. I thank God for my beautiful companion for 41 years, my soulmate, my girlfriend, my friend, and my confidant. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Um, we need a message in this mess age. We're living in a culture, a caustic culture, where the world has lost their spiritual compass. Um, it fulfills the scripture that the prophet Isaiah said, Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good and put darkness for light and light for darkness. We're living in that day where there's a climate of fear that's permeating through the whole world. People are shut in and, and not going to church where you get your strength, where you get the word. I know you can get it on the YouTube and all the other ones, but there's nothing like coming into the house of believers that are lifting up their hands and the atmosphere is, is cleansed. The atmosphere is lightened where God's word falls on good soil. And so out there, you're at home, find yourself a full gospel church that believes in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and live in a holy, consecrated life for the Lord. You need to uh, call us and we'll have numbers that you can call and we will find you anywhere in the world. We will, Lord, will make a way for you. Uh, I'm asking, uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. Let's pray right now. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, I, uh, we're here today. I'm asking you for clarity of thought and and uh, precision of uh, expression of words that you may be glorified, that your name will be lifted up. And Lord, we ask, Lord, touching everyone here at the sound of my voice. Lord, we love you, Lord. We need you. And we give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, I'm wearing this jersey today, and you can see I got my name on it. I was going to play uh, a section of sound bite from uh, Monday Night Football, but then I found out that might be theft, you know, so, and it, and, uh, so it kind of goes with, with the message today. I want to talk about identity theft, kind of a hyperbole, you know, you're talking about identity theft, and I'm stealing their song, so... You can just imagine the song when I walked up on the stage, okay? So, but um, uh, someone wrote that Christian faith is faith in Christ. Its value and worth is not in the one believing, but in the one believed. Not in the one trusting, but the one trusted. What that tells us that we have an objective faith. We know who we believe in. Paul said that I may know him. Sometimes Christians are labeled as people with crazy faith. You just jump in the dark and no, we step into the light. We have a sound faith because we believe in the one who paid the price for us on Calvary. Now, the Galatians has six chapters and I have to say this, that um, I knew that I was allowed, Pastor allowed me to, to, to close it out, and I thank you for that, Pastor, to close out. He had 16 weeks, so I took on the task of listening all over again to 16 messages. Started on Monday morning and ended on Saturday afternoon, but I went through all 16 of them, and I was so elated, so excited. I was listening in the car, and I'm driving. I said, go ahead, Pastor. And, you know, because, I mean, he preached that word of God. I urge you to go back to the first one. He's wearing a black and white sweater. 
because I remembered all the shirts that he wore because that's how I found out what lesson I was in. I started from that black and white sweater and then he had one with a big square and he had this and I read all it, but that's how I found out. But it, everything he, he preached was on the mark. It was true. Some of the things he came across were kind of hard. I said, whoa, he's rough. But he was tight, but he was right. And sometimes, amen, you can't say amen, say out, say, oh, it's me. But that's what a true pastor is. A pastor that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Everybody needs a pastor. If you're out there, you need a pastor. Because if you can't be under authority, you'll never be in authority. A lot of times people come. I remember I used to drive a train at night, four in the morning. The man got on, started yelling, telling everybody, y'all going to hell. And then, you know, he waking everybody up. And then he said, I'll give a dollar for anybody who got a Bible. I just happened to have three Bibles in my backpack. So I stopped the train. I opened my door. I said, I got three Bibles. <laughs> You know, and he backed off. So I asked him, I said, where do you go to church? I don't go to church. I said, well, who's your pastor? God's my pastor. I said, there's your problem, brother. You got, me, you got a pastor who give you the wisdom to sit down, open your Bible, and God would draw somebody to you. So and all things be done decently in order. But uh, when we look at the, uh, at the book of Galatians, it has the prominent theme of the, of this epistle is about grace and grace alone. God's grace uh, uh, alone. And this is what we need. We need God's grace. By grace, God frees us from the law, liberates us from legalism, and the handwriting the ordinances that were nailed on the cross, and gives us a spirit-filled life of joy. That's amen. Meaning and ministry. Accepting Christ by faith. We are not only justified, but become what? New beings. We're new creatures. If any man be in Christ, not only are we justified, but there's a do-over. A do-over. We're made, created new. That's amen. Because all Christ, Christ lives in us. Amen. And that's very important. Our lives reflect his life as he is formed in us. Y'all forgive me, my eyes are a little blurry this morning, but they'll, they'll come back on mine. Let's say, man, just let me shake a little bit. Amen. But, uh, so I was given a task to deal with the last, uh, uh, there, if you could put that on the screen uh, to our audio man. Thank you, Brother Brown. Amen. Uh, Galatians, uh, the sixth chapter, 11th verse, the ESV, English Standard Version, which I found very good, more up to date. And, and he begins to talk, uh, Apostle Paul. And he, and he sees with what large letters I'm writing to you with my own hand. Now, he took it upon his own hand, amen, on his own to write the final few words. He was so energized, so excited, he said, hey, let me finish this off and be sure I put my name on it. I'm so excited. Now, there was some question as to what the large letters were. Uh, we don't really know. The Bible does not. It leaves it blank. So when the Bible doesn't uh, leave things blank, don't put things in there. Like when the woman was uh, in the, uh, caught in adultery and Jesus began to write in the dirt, we can only assume what he wrote, but we don't actually know what he wrote. And sometimes we get in the danger of putting our two cents into things and messing up the whole thing. But some attributed that God, that Apostle Paul had a eye problem. You know, maybe his eyes were blurry, so he writes in big letters. That's what I do today. Uh, and when I give my tithes, I give my check to my wife, write the tithes. Amen. Because I want to be sure I don't put too many zeros on there. And then the church is all excited. And then when my check begin to bounce all around the church, we're going to have problems. But we thank God. But in the, the, the lesson for us is this. The message of, of this passage is important enough for Paul to take the pen from the scribe and write it himself. Therefore, we need to give utmost attention to what he said. If he took that time out to write to say, I'm going to do the, the Bible said we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard. How many times we we hear beautiful words, you know, and, you know from our pastor and then we forget about it. 
Why? Because you don't put no importance on it. Every word that comes across this uh, pulpit is important to me. And that's how we should be. We should hang on every word that comes across because it's not the pastor pre it's God through him speaking to us and we can lose out what God is trying to tell us because we got our mind on other things Amen. now Galatians 12 through 13 uh, it's, it's just talking about the law and Jesus Christ trying to bring them again therefore it was important in the ministry of that day to proclaim that Christ alone was the way to God the ministers who proclaimed Christ alone they were persecuted they were persecuted when they said, no, no, all you got to do, you know, be baptized to us and live for the Lord. It's all in the cross. That's all we need. We don't need all these rituals and all these laws. And they were persecuted. It makes me think about when I first got saved. And um, when I first got saved, I went to a church on the south side. I was the only white person there. All black church, black pastor, everything. And I used to go on a job. And the guys would have their, their jokes, their all color jokes and things. I would not participate in that. I would kind of isolate myself. I didn't want to corrupt myself. Because sometimes, you know, you got to have enough wisdom to know when to walk away from things because it can corrupt your spirit. It's like watching TV sometimes. You're watching all these crazy news stuff, you're going to get an angry spirit. I don't like this person. No more. Like, and then you wonder why you're so mad you're driving, you know. Because you picked up these things. And you've got to know when to, to come away from that. Get in your Bible and meditate on God's Word. Yes. So I was on a job and, and they did a lot of things. They, they put a hangman, hang, hangman's noose in my locker. And, you know, and, you know say I was, a, I was marching with the Nazis and all that. And I could have defended myself, but I'd rather let my life validate that. I could have said, no, you all are wrong. But I lived the life before them. Amen. And that's how we do it. That's what Paul did. He didn't need no validation when, when he went to Jerusalem. I mean, it was like three years he was in the desert, and we read in Galatia, but when he finally got there, he didn't go there to get validated by the council. He already got his validation on the road to Damascus. Let's say amen. So I had that problem all the time because I didn't, uh, you know, I, I witnessed to them, but then I talked to my friend, uh, uh, Trevor Booth, he's black, and he said he worked on a job with all white people, and they did the same thing to him. So it was a, it's a sin thing. It ain't a color thing. It's a sin thing. Let's say amen. Sometimes we would try to make it a color thing. Ain't no color thing. It's a sin thing. Let's say amen. Now, that's, uh, now we got to understand something. The scripture said in Matthew, and, and it said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you traveled uh, the uh, land and see to make one proselyte and when he's one you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves wow that's kind of rough and I looked at that you know and that's what was happening here Apostle Paul these two Judaizers came in it's like you're doing good in church and there's always someone trying to bring you under bondage like some churches churches where leaders are like lords over the people in other words a lot of them got what they call pastoral salvation you know if he dies what are we going to do no you should live for Christ amen but they have put rules and regulations and you're trying to wear a certain thing I've been in a church one time I walked in there with my mustache they wouldn't even call me brother let alone a saint of God they said we thank God for this man you know, because they didn't believe in facial hair. And I had problems with that because when Jesus was being persecuted, the Bible said they pulled the hair from his face. So, you know, I don't know where they got that from. But this is what Paul was dealing with. He had all these traditions that they want to couple it up with the, the grace of God. Amen? amen. It just ain't going to mix. Let's say amen. amen. So Galatians 6, 14 through 17 now, if you can go to there, go to Galatians 6, 14 through 17. Uh, but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus, by which the word has been crucified to me and to the world. Amen. 
And then, and then, and then the, uh, the next verse said, And as for all who walk by this rule, I like that, peace and mercy be upon let me Let me go back to the 16 verse. Let's say amen. amen. And so what he was saying that we are crucified. I died daily for the cross. We're supposed to bear the cross. And not wear the cross. No, 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 wait a minute. Uh, now let me reiterate, you can wear a cross. But so many people, they live in all, any kind of thing, you know. Uh, I remember the time when a man, he uh, was driving and this woman was in front of him and she stopped and the light turned green. She's still there and he's hitting the steering wheel and he's raving, man. And then, you know, and he's just going like crazy until finally there was a knock on the door, on his window. He looked, it was a police officer. He said, Could you come out of the car? He got out of the car. And so the police officer put him in the back of the of the uh, police uh, the car. And he's sitting in there, you know, and he's going, well, What's going on? You know, what's going on? Why are you doing this to me? He said, Well, I saw you raving and turning red and beating the steering wheel, hitting it so hard and raving mad. And then I saw your bumper sticker says, I love Jesus. You know, and you know, let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. So I figured you stole the car. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how it was with the Apostle Paul. They're, they're all acting kind of crazy, but he said, it's about the cross. We suffer for the cross sake when you, you identify with Jesus Christ. We used to sing a song I was trying to learn on the way here. It says, goodbye world, I live no longer in sin. Goodbye world. That's why I don't sing with the worship team. Uh, but in goodbye world. I die to the world. You got to die to the world. You don't, you know, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. Some say, well, I, I, I can't go here. When the person says I can't go here, that means that they want to, but they can't. Yeah. But when you said, I don't want to be there, you know, I'm not going out to the party set and dropping it like it's hot. You know, playing hide and seek with God, you know. God don't play games like that. You hide your sin uh, uh, and during the week, and then on Sunday you're seeking God. You're playing hide and seek. It's not like that. But the desire in your heart, I don't want that no more because I have a loving relationship with God. Not, you know, people got relationships. Sometimes I talk to people and I say, how are you and your husband doing? And they'll say, it's complicated. So I know that there's a problem with the relationship. There shouldn't be no problems that you can't solve through the love of Jesus Christ. Let's say amen. But you've got to have a well-made up mind. Galatians 6.15 says, for neither circumcision, I love this, counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new crea creation. He is carried away with the surging thoughts and swelling emotions, so he adds another summarizing appeal. Right on the back of this last, right before he closes out the book of Galatians, he reemphasizes it. And, 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 he, and, he, and, he, and he has to deal with this because he, he's saying that the only thing that we should be glorifying is in the cross. Now... This is not to deny the baptism, okay? He was not denying the baptism of the water or the spirit. But he was simply saying that we are not complete just with that. We are about ready to baptize someone today, I believe, a young man, my grandson. And I talked with him. And I said, uh, you know, I want to question him. I said, uh, why are you getting baptized? Now, he didn't say because my friend got baptized, or will get baptized. No, what he said was, he said, I want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I said, what? Say what? Can you say, I did. I said, can you say that again? He said, I want to have a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I said, boy, who you been talking to? He said, Pastor Williams. I said, oh. Yeah. So our pastor's on the scene working. But that's what it's about, having a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why when we take down, amen, when we, uh, when we take, the Bible said, he that believeth and is baptized. 
Not he that's baptized and believing, but you have to go into the water believing. That's why when we take an uh, individual into the water, they have to make an open proclamation. Because baptism in water is an outward expression of an inward conviction. In other words, you're just not going down. We ask them. We ask everyone, why are you going down? And why you want? Because I love the Lord. I want. I, not only do I accept Him as my Savior, but Lord. Lord means master and ruler. That you're going to try to do everything God tells you to do. Let's say Amen. And every, and then upon. And then we say it. And upon your repentance from sin. What do they do? Whatever they thought. Maybe they stole a cookie, but they feel remorseful. Let me tell you something. I was down there praying the other day, and, and um, I really didn't have much words. But when I saw the imagery of the cross, I started repenting more and more. It's hard not to see the imagery of the cross and not have repentance. I didn't say remorse, remorse is sore, but repentance, that repent, I, mean, I want to make a change to be a better man, a better husband, a better father. And tears started coming down because I looked at that bloody cross that Jesus hung between heaven and earth, pay the price that we could not pay. Amen. The Bible said he gave his back to the smiters. Where did you get these wounds in the house of a friend? So repentance is there. And then we say, and upon the obedience of God's word, we need to obey God's word. Let's say amen. amen. So in Galatians, Paul is, is calling these new Christians to retain the freedom given to them by Christ. This freedom is the result of God's grace, which delivers us from the legalism and the performance cycle of the law and, and loosens us to the spirit-filled life of joy and fulfillment on the path of pursuing the love relationship of Jesus Christ. It takes us off one cycle and puts us on another cycle. Let's say amen. So we must understand that there is only one God, amen, only one God, one gospel, the doctrine of the exclusivity of Christ, so that we are prepared to respond when people ask us. Don't all religions, don't all woes lead to heaven? No, they don't. Buddha said, go that way. Muhammad said, this way. Confucius said, any way. But only Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. One gospel, one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. Truth is truth. We're called grace and truth. Now, if we, if we have grace and no truth, then we're meaningless. And then if we have tra uh, truth and no grace, then we're just plain mean. But grace and truth are coupled together. When we speak the truth, we seek, speak with grace and love and compassion. That's why Paul said, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. A pa Pastor Justin was hitting some hard things up here. But in essence, I could hear it ringing in my ear. Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you, no, the truth is the truth. Yeah. If the word find you, then after the service, you need to come up and get prayer for that. Amen. Say, Pastor, I in our area. Don't try to do it on your own. All right. Oh, boy. We must be prepared and willing to share the, this exclusive gospel in an inclusive world. Let's say amen. amen. The relevance of the gospel. The gospel is relevant to all. It can and should be made uh, indigenous to every social, racial, cultural, and national setting. Pastor Williams gave us a vast amount of subjects in the 16 weeks. The two perversions, the new and the old. Diagnosis and cure. The gospel and the great drawback. Foolish forgetfulness and demons in the church and many more. He went through all of them. I like the one with the MRI. The law that showed you that you, you know, was that, that machine, you know? That remind me of a man that lost his dog. His dog died, and, and he couldn't believe his dog was dead. So he took it to the vet. And the vet said, laid him on the table, said, Mr., your dog is dead. I don't believe that. I need to get another test. So the man said, okay. So he went out, came back in, and he brought a cat. And he had the cat walk all around the table. That dog never moved. 
He said, now do you believe your dog is yes? So he gave him a bill, and the bill was $200. He said, $200 for what? Well, $10 for my consultation, and $190 for the CAT scan. <laughs> That's what the law was. The law was like this when they made automobiles for the first time. People just driving, going through this, bam, hitting each other, hitting each other, bam, bam. Say, man, we gotta, we gotta put some stop signs up. So stop signs were put up. Now, when the word transgress, you go beyond the stop sign. So when they saw the stop sign, they hit the brake. That's what the law did. But Bible said, for what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, people still going through the stop signs. Because they didn't have no inner spirit controlling them. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It doesn't really control. It guides you. Hey, this ain't the right way to go. Amen. Let's say amen. amen. Now, Galatians, Apostle Paul gives a descriptive account. I like this. Uh, Paul, or Pastor Justin brought out, it was descriptive. There's things that are prescriptive, like Acts 2.38, prescriptive. Paul gives a description of what he experienced on the road to Damascus, on his account experience on the road to Damascus. It was an act of God's grace. It was a divine intervention to rescue him from self-destruction. Now, Apostle Paul wasn't seeking uh, Jesus. <laughs> he, he, and he wasn't on some, what you call, religious quest, okay? Because he was confident and comfortable in his religion. He was comfortable. Because the scripture said a little further down in the 14th verse of Galatians 1.14, it said, and he advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous Here's the thing for the traditions of my father. He was zealous. You know, you can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. This can only be seen as the, the coming to faith as an act of God. As Paul reflected upon all that he, had happened, he felt that God had set him apart for a special task even before he was born. Like Jeremiah said, before I was formed in my mama's womb. Yeah. I came out a prophet. Let's say amen. Now, what I like when Paul got, now here's the thing. You know, why do we got to go to church? We go to church, we should go to church at least two, three times a week if we can, but because of what, what's going on. But we need to be, some of you need to be in the house of God seven days a week. Because not just, you know, I'm not, I'm talking to the smoles now, the Sunday morning only. But I am talking, you should be, <laughs> the, the problems you got in the flesh, you need to be at the altar seven days a week. There's an old saying, you know, when, I, when we go out, my wife and I go out, and, 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 and there's nobody there but the kids. You know, we always say, I hope things are going okay. Because while the cat's away, the what? The mice. And sometimes, that's why when you got Christ in your life, he goes with you. He's with you. The teaching is with you. You've got that word of God with you. Your character is when no one else is around. How do you act? You might act different on a job. And, and that's another question. I should be able to go on a job and they should say, you saved and sanctified. I went one time to check on somebody. I'm looking for a minister. I felt so embarrassed. That person's not here. But Paul, he was only gone, <laughs> and every time he come back, he's got an issue. Now, I'm talking about identity theft today. Identity theft. Now, here comes Paul, and then you've got all these people in the corner. There's like three groups. There was Barnabas and Paul. They believed that you don't have to be circumcised. Then you had the Judaizers that said you had to be circumcised. And then you had the pillars of the church that were trying to decide what to do. And they went with Paul. They believed that circles, you didn't know, don't have to be circumcised. But the Judaizers were over there in the corner, and they had, uh, what do you call it, CLM on their shirts. You know, circumcised lives matter. 
Everybody walking around with circumcised, circumcised lives matter, you know. They had a whole group over there, you know, and, and they're there. And they had an effect because, you know, some people, let me tell you, the human nature has a propensity and proclivity to go back into their own efforts. That's called ego, edging God out. It was all the way in the beginning with Adam, amen. When Abel made offered a more perfect sacrifice, it was counted to him for righteousness because he gave what God wanted. Not he didn't try to do like Cain said. Let me make it look good with some pretty avocados and some peaches and mangoes. But Abel offered that bloody sacrifice because that's what God wanted. There's more schools of thought on that. But understand something. I want to talk about that. Uh, Stolen identity. And we're familiar with that term. You can't not go by a day you hear about how someone got their credit and all that. And stolen, you know. Now, I, I kind of wish somebody would steal my credit. They'd probably do better than me. But, uh, I'll, you know, but stolen identity. I, I better quit saying that. We're on the air. Um, John, uh, Pastor Justin talked about this last. He said, the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus come that we might have life and what? More what? Ooh, watch it now. Look at it. Let's go all the way back now. We talked about that. Here's the Judaizers are there. And they're going around. And, you know, you got to be circumcised. But God, Adam was in the garden with Eve. God made Adam from the dirt. Then he puts him in the garden. Puts him in the garden. In other words, he gave him a job. All you women out there, sisters, if they don't got no finance, ain't gonna be no romance. You gotta have a job. Look at it, they can't even take care of themselves. Don't know what it is to buy a roll of toilet paper. Baby, I love you. You can't live off of love. But they gotta have a job. So then God looks at Adam and he said, I'm going to give him a woman. Now, Adam wasn't looking for her. God gave Eve to Adam. He took a rib. I heard a preacher say he took something out of Adam, but then when he got Eve, he got a whole lot more. A whole lot more. In other words, when you get married, you get a whole lot more. When, and then they look at you, uh, are you feeling what I'm feeling? You, you gotta, you're getting a whole lot more with the package. Like I asked my wife, how you doing? I'm all right. That means there's problems. You know? But Eve was right there in the garden with Adam. Now Adam probably told Eve, he said, listen, girl, you get by this tree over here, and don't even look at it. Just walk on by. <laughs> don't even touch it. Don't even look at it. Because she added another word. You know, one of the days, she said, well, we're not supposed to touch. That probably came from Adam. But <laughs> she goes ahead. Now I was thinking about it. I was praying last night. You know, I thought about, you know, Adam was kind of jacked up. He kind of waited for her to take it. And ain't nothing happened. <laughs> you know, maybe he didn't think too much about it. I thought he thought about it. Yeah, cause he, he, didn't go, he didn't go like, no, don't do that. He looks there, waits a while. <laughs> ain't nothing happen. I guess I'll go ahead. But God gave him... Your sister might not like it, but God gave the man the priority. He was the head. That's right. That's the word. He was the head. But with the head comes responsibility. I was telling one of my sons, grandsons, I, I don't watch out for me, and I didn't look, and I hit something. I jump out. I said, man, why didn't you look? You know, yeah, and then I, after I, I, you know, that one with the flesh with the fits of anger. You know, yeah, let's go get ice cream. But uh, that was in the message. He was doing good until he got to there. I said, I don't know. Did, 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 did God really call him? <laughs> yeah. But... And then I apologized to the son. I said, you know what? I said that I was behind the wheel. It was my responsibility, not your fault. When you have priority, you have to take the responsibility. Even if things go wrong, someone has to take the responsibility. Adam did not do that. Adam hid with Adam and Eve. 
So they're playing hide and seek with God. And all of a sudden, God said, where art thou, Adam? Where are you, man? Now, God knew God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. He knew where Adam was, but he was not talking about his geographical location. He was talking about his position of priority that he got put on a different label. Amen. The enemy took his label, his manhood, his priority because he was passive. He didn't say, where art thou, Adam and Eve? He said, where art thou, Adam? He went right there, and the Bible said, by the disobedience of one, by one man, sin. It was not Eve that brought sin into the world. It was Adam who had the responsibility to do God's word. Amen. All through the scripture, find me a man. We got men today that have lost their identity. They wear jerseys with other people's names on them. They wear shoots with other things. Amen. They lost their identity. If the man would be in the household, we would not have broken families. We would not have broken families, and we would have broken churches if it wasn't for broken families. We wouldn't have a broken church or broken communities if it wasn't broken church. Our community is broke because of nation because the man left his priority. Women are the same importance but has a different role. I text somebody, you want to show me commitment? You want to show me leadership? Lead your family to church. As for me and my house, we're going to church. Amen. Most of the time it's the woman that said, don't we need to be in church? Mm -mm. All in grace, Paul had this. Uh, uh, mm. He was upset with the Jews. I, I got to bring this down. And, and they were saying that, here's what they did. The Judaizers felt, there's some churches here that you got to wear a certain code. You don't do this. You don't. Uh, he's gone, but I'm talking about Joseph Coleman. Joseph Coleman got it right right before he went. When I heard his testimony, he, and I ain't naming no church, but he came out of one so legalistic that when I went to the funeral, even the pastor, instead of talking, he talked about how many churches they got and what they did. There again, it's a, you know, counting this gain. I want you to line up with me, get in with this program. You know, let us all march down. We even had an organization. People were shouting, and all of a sudden, they stopped the music. Let's receive the bishops and pastors. Yes, sir. And I was walking in with them. Lord, touched my heart and said, now. Nah. We're second to all, you know, and, and all the pomps and the robes and the recognition. That's what the Judaizers wanted. And then they try to say, well, if you don't do it, then it's called cheap grace. Easy believing. And Paul said, no, no, no. This, when you get the Lord, it's not a license of sin, but it loosens up your life to live for the Lord. When you're in a relationship with the Lord, it's easy. Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? Flesh gets no glory. Let's say amen. amen. Paul, others, he said that the freedom that comes to Christ Jesus is not a license of sin, but a strength to live righteous. I remember, and I get ready to close, oh boy, Paul had to deal with a racial situation. And, and here Peter, he's hanging around with, the, with the, the Gentiles, eating ham hocks and greens and stuff, you know, and pork chops and cheeseburgers with, uh, burgers with cheese on it. And as soon as the Jews came in, he pushes it away. It's a racial thing. Yeah. He pushes away, he gets up, and then they got caught up in the same thing, even Barnabas. Barnabas got caught up, he moving away. Paul sees this and says, hey, ain't happening up in here. We, 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 don't, we don't roll like that over here. He said, Peter, I don't know what you're about, but you lost your identity. Let's say amen. amen. That's what he was saying. He said, stop trying to be what you're not and start trying to be who you are. And supposed to be. I heard a mother said, uh, be what you is because you is what you ain't and you ain't what you is. In other words, he said, let me tell you who I am. And you can put that scripture, I get ready to close. Galatians 2.20. I love this scripture. Let's say amen. Galatians 2.20. It talks about, I have been, Paul said, you might be like that, but let me tell you who I am. By the grace of God, I am that I am. I might not be what you want me to be. I'm a one God, apostolic, tongue talk, scripture code, heaven, born again, believe 
baptized in Jesus' name, filled up with the Holy Ghost. But I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in this body. The, the life I live as I walk, as I walk, as I walk, is an expression of what God is in me. And gave himself to me. Let's say amen. amen. I did it, Robbie. <laughs> Next step. Next step. Chat with us. Jesus met a woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. But he sat with her and drank with her. Call us up and we'll talk with you. I don't care. If you're a Muslim, atheist, agnostic, or whatever, just talk with us. There's going to just be the three of us on the line. You, me, whoever, and Jesus. And Jesus loves you just as you are. Just as you are. You don't get good to get God. You get God to get good. And you say, I'm trying to get it together. You can't get it together. Jesus died on the cross. Amen for us. And all we want to do is talk with you. Sometimes you just need to talk with somebody. Maybe you want to vent off. Maybe you want to, yeah, go ahead. We can handle it. We, got, we can handle it. We got elders and ministers. They can handle it. And then after you do that, the next step is uh, you join a group. No man's an island. That's not scripture. But we need one another. You need someone that, that's spiritual, that ain't going to get with you and you're wrong. Like our pastor, he tells us things. He, one thing about it, Pastor Williams, he ain't going to get with you wrong. He's going to tell you what like it is because he's responsible for souls. And we're going to tell you the truth. And the truth don't change. I'm the Lord thy God. The truth don't change. People change, but God's unchangeable. And after you join that group and you, you're feeling comfortable with a group, and I thank God for our men's group because we got leaders in that men's group, but they got to first be committed to that. You can't become a leader unless you're committed. You see some preachers with highly anointing, those are preachers that suffered. Paul said, I bear the marks in that scripture. He suffered many things. Our pastor comes down all the way down here to open up service to help somebody. He works full time, got a family, wife, pastor, but he takes because he's committed to the cross. Are you committed to the cross or are you do it out of convenience? And then last but not, you get on a team. A team, man, the A team. The A team. <laughs> I'm on a team. I still ain't on the worship team, but I'm on a team. Pastor, you got other gifts, Pastor. <laughs> stay, stay in your lane, Pastor. Stay in your lane. But that's what it is. The whole book of Galatians, we finish it up. It ends on the prominence of grace. And God loves you. We love you. Back to our pastor, Pastor Justin Williams. Hey. Stolen identity. Um... With that being said, I will, I'm just going to close out in prayer because everything he said was on the money. And, and really this ideal is exactly what he hit on that. We have to know who we are in Christ. Right. Don't let no one be rich you. All right. You know what I'm saying? Don't let me and Pastor Sunday have to come to you and say, you foolish <laughs> church member. You right? But to really be understanding who am I in Christ. If you're struggling with that, talk to someone. If you're struggling with depression, talk to someone. All right. If you're struggling with your image of what you think and who you are, talk to someone. Yes. Because we love you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we ask you to just come to your throne. God, thank you for being such a gracious God. Your word is so sweet. It's so sweet. It's sweeter than the honeycomb that you said in scripture. It's so sweet. Because it gives us nurturing for something that will last for all eternity, which is our soul. God, I, I ask you, pray 
for myself and everyone in here, God, that we are so conscious. This body is going to fade. All the accolades and all the success, that job is going to fade. As soon as we die, they're going to replace us. So God, we want to live for you. We want to live for you because you are going to be there for all eternity. He says, life and life more abundantly. God, I ask you, pray right now, God, that we seek our hearts, God. Father God, I pray right now that someone is sitting there and they are sitting there questioning, what do you want me to do? How do I get connected? Yes. Father God, I ask you, pray, God, that they have that courage yes. to stand up, to raise their hand, to, to, to tap someone on the shoulder, to pull someone aside and come to Christ. Father God, there's someone that's sitting here who said, I'm a Christian, but what's next? And God, you're calling them to be more committed. Pastor Tino said, no, no more patty cake. All right. No more on and off, on and off. But a consistent pursuit for you, God. God, hey. 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day, constantly pursue. Just wanted to be near you, God. Just wanted to be near you, God. God, man, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, God, sometimes we feel lonely. Some of us in here that feel like, I'm all alone, I'm alone. And that desire and that hunger to be near someone is a hunger that you're saying, get in your, your presence, God. Don't pursue anything but pursue you. Work on our hearts, God. Father God, I ask you, pray that someone is sitting here and they're saying, you know, I've been, I've been faithful to the ministry. What's next? All right. And you're calling them to lead. All right. You're calling them to disciple someone. Hallelujah. You're calling them to speak life in other people's lives. All right. And they're afraid in the season, God. Come on. They're afraid because they feel like they don't have the accolades. They're afraid that someone's going to bring up their past. But just like Pastor Sunday just preached, God, David, we are a new creature. Amen. Church background or no church background, the only thing that counts for Christ is a new creature. That's right. Amen. Do-over. Come on. Father God, we ask you thank you for the do-over. We thank you for the do-over. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the do-over. God, I ask you, pray, God, that we have a heart to pursue you, a heart to share the gospel. Father God, I ask you, pray, that you protect and watch over everyone that's in our church. Everyone who's watching this message, protect us. And God, put us on fire for you. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.